all of my uh, family, we were both people. My uh, original name was Khuang Mạnh Vu. Mom and dad was market uh, farmers. Two of my older brothers was in the South Army. After the communists come in, we become a, a target. We go to them, we, we, we not their friend. I didn't have any perception of what I, what I was going to do when I grow up. Just imagine a 13 years old boy. One day your mom and dad just call you in and tell you that you have to escape Vietnam with your sister and your brother who was older. And I remember that particular day when, you know, when it's time to leave, I come in and tell my dad that I'm, I was going. And then he just couldn't look at me. He just turned away and then say, go, go. We caught the bus and then the people who organized the, the escape have to hide that in some local houses. And at 10 o'clock at night time, they uh, took us onto the little boat. We have to work two hours. During the two hours, the water start to rise. And I remember I have a pair of trousers on, but after the water go up to my chest and then it eventually go over my head, I couldn't swim with the trousers, so I have to take the trousers off. And then we got onto the big boat. After 53 hours, we came to an oil rig. They asked us uh, where we come from, and we say we're from Vietnam, and we was refugee. Basically, what we wanted was to ask them for direction, so they point out to the refugee camp in Malaysia. But they knew beforehand that the next day the sea going to be real rough, so they took everyone on board. But the next day when they took us on the big ship to a refugee camp in Malaysia, that's when we realized that we were very, very lucky. I mean, back then, because you don't know any better, so when you get on the boat, you think, this is heaven, this is quite safe. But after we got rescued from the oil rig, we looked down the boat, and it looked very, very tiny, and it looked very, very unsafe. So I, I was in a refugee camp for six months. The funny thing was that when I first arrived, I only got one pair of shorts on me. One single pair of shorts, nothing else, no thong, no, nothing else. And because back then there was a lot of people in the refugee camp, so the refugee high commission take a while to help you. So for the first three days, I would just one pair of shorts. Every time, have a bath, work on the beach so it dry off. Australian High Commission was very, very good. They come into a refugee camp. They ask people whether you want to come to Australia. And if you like to go to Australia, you just put the application in. So my sister and her husband decided to come to Australia. And because I was a minor, I came with them to Australia. Thank you. Well, we came to work at, uh, from Sydney by bus, and I tell you something very funny though, because in Vietnam traditionally that you have to live in a city. Anything away from the city is no good, and the further you travel from the city, the worse it gets. So <clears throat> on the way from, from Sydney to Wagga in 1981, <clears throat> it was a big drought. On the way, everything was yellow, yellow. You can't see anything green. We come to, to Waga in uh, December. And then the houses, the town that we go through, so small. Because, you know, the further you travel from the city, everything, I mean, 200 k, you see one house. You know, and then we say, oh my God, where, where are they taking us? And then suddenly we come to a, a town, and there's a few houses, and then the next thing you know, we came to San Isidro. It was difficult because the whole family is very, very limited in English. There were some Vietnamese who came to work out before us, and they were able to help us to interpret those, a certain thing. Most of the time we just have to struggle with all the uh, Australian people coming, some coming to visit, some coming to help. 
we sort of didn't know which will switch. It's very funny that the whole family could tune a die, pull all the curtain down. So when people knock on the door, we will look out and have a look who it, is, who it was. If someone we knew that come to our house before, we will open the door. And if someone that we didn't know, we were very hesitant to open the door. But the, the thing was because we didn't have any transport, so they knew that we're inside the house. And then at the same time, they can't, we, they can't get in because we, we didn't open the door. So they have to go and get somebody else because they, they thought that something might happen to us. So they, they go and get a few more people. And then we, we still want to open the door. And then finally, they, they will get some, some other people to come that we recognize. And that's when we open the door for them to come in. <laughs> my sister and my brother decided maybe they should open a restaurant. So they bought a little business on the main street. It was a very small business. I was still at school then. After 18 years old, I, I was always thinking that, you know, we, we, we'll go into family business. Even though I study at university. Go the, go the sweet and sour chicken and fried rice. A lot of people know me, and I, I know a lot of people. And, you know, we, go, we got regular the <laughs> customer come in. I think even though they say that you go to Saigon, uh, you know, you see Peter, but they, they consider to be, you know, Peter, not a Vietnamese guy, but, you know, Peter who come in and say the few jokes. And <laughs> I've been living in Wagga for 25 years, and I just can't imagine myself not living in Wagga. <laughs>